Good morning, everybody, and welcome to what is now our 17th live stream presentation. And we're not at Rogue Gallery. We're at the Bronze Age. We just not a foundry. What is it? Metal smithing uh, studio. Metal smithing studio? Okay. Oh, I don't know. That whatever works. it is. Whatever sounds more glamorous. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, bronze we're... Bronze finishing studio. Bronze finishing. We are in great company because, as you know, we've been following the process of casting Simba in bronze. And as surely as my witness, my coworker, the question I'm asked most often in the gallery is how do you dip the sculpture you're doing in bronze? And the answer is you don't dip it. You hire artisans, like the ones who we're about to meet, and you know Eric, to cast these in what's called the lost wax process. You saw how Simba was cut into pieces at Jeff Christensen's and molded. You then saw two weeks ago Megan with Thumb Butte and her staff of artists cast it in bronze. Now we have the pieces. So we're here today at Eric's facility where he has assembled these amazing artists who I greatly respect for their talent and everything else. Come on in. <laughs> that are going to show you how this piece is assembled. So Eric, you introduce everybody and we're going right. to get this thing rolling. All right. Well, this is Jeremiah. He's been helping uh, Stan right here <coughs> put Simba together. And yeah. He's going to show you some grinding a little bit later, okay. how we get the pieces ready to put together. Okay. Stan uh, is going to be working on, on showing you how it's put together, the panels that this mm -hmm. is cast in. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, at the end, we'll give you a little taste of uh, the next, the next one, the, the second next one, of October, the patina, the patina episode. Yeah. And we'll show you a little bit With of Kristen, Kristen over here yeah. doing a patina. Okay. So behind all of us right here is what we're going to work on today. So what we're all holding is the parts and pieces to this, how many pieces was this cut into, Stan? Oh, look, we're gonna go 17. 17 yeah, pieces. Yeah, we'll just say 17 is a good number. That sounds good, it's odd. Yeah. yeah, just like us, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna help Stan start putting this thing together. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you can see all these panels were casted separately. Now, Stan's job is to make these panels fit and weld them together which is not an easy task because of all the warpage that takes place in the wax process. Plus the casting itself, the metal starts to twist and distort. By the time these guys get these, they're a giant jigsaw puzzle. So let me take you over here just for a second if I can. Look at this pile of parts. This is how Eric and his artists receive the piece in a pile of parts. And they're going to take all that and put it together to get of course, that's not the lion, but they're going to here's, put it together. Here's a couple pieces yeah, of the lion. Here you go. The forearms, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So, Stan, let's turn this around. Let's get one of these panels yeah, on let's, here. Uh, let's okay. Go ahead and do that. You want me to grab this in? Oh, Stan will do it. <laughs> Stan's the muscle. <laughs> okay, good. I, I, I'm glad I could help you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so. I'm glad you're okay, so. This is the panel. And it does go. Where's it go, Stan? Well, you just got to turn it around and make sure it. Looks right here. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so now you tell me what you would normally do. You find this. Right, so, what we're going to do is you're going to have to steady it for me. Okay. And I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get one spot that I know is going to tack. Okay. So, I'm going to lift this side. Okay. You're going to pull that right oh. there. Right there. Okay, ready? Gotcha. Okay, we're tacked. Okay, you're tacked. So that's we're the start tacked. of it. Now you've got to now make I've all this. Now just seam down. Okay. So you're going to tack it again where it meets. Yeah, I'm just going to tack it right up in here because I'm going to have to get in there and pry the heck out okay. of that and move it around. So if you tack again there, let's look at what you've got over here to deal with. Well, look, you can't quite tack there yet, Ken, because that's not bent. fitting correct. Okay. Yeah, you can only is right here. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, you okay. can only put a tack where the piece is fitting perfectly together. And this is the warpage I talked about before where it starts to, to Yeah, so that's twist. not quite fitting. Yeah. So he'll tack it here and then okay. we'll move on. Okay, good. Here Ready? we go. Okay. And now what? Well, you move this over, and you got that pry bar over there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and this is where you just start take, bending. You take this, you move that. Okay, is that where you want it? 
Pretty close? It's pretty close. Okay. I can right, right in that corner. Ready? Yep. And we're set. Perfect. Now so, you see, sometimes gaps will end up like this because during the process of making this, these waxes are cut into pieces and every time you cut the wax, you lose a little bit of the, of the bronze. Piece itself, yeah. yeah. And there's also little areas that don't fully cast and that can create yeah. kind of a space yeah. like that. But the key is we have to see if all your texture and your form matches up. So right here we can see that your line here, you can see how it continues yeah. into this. Yeah. And you can see that that form is gonna still be good. Now, so this is fairly easy in terms of lining up. Yeah. A lot of your projects aren't so easy. Yeah. Well, I can let's, see let's a, look at a this discrepancy side. right here. Let's turn this thing around. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all fun and games on the front. <laughs> yeah, and now look right. at the back. Yeah. So something's wrong there, Stan. What is it? Well, I'm going to have to move it. All right. So um, close your eyes here because Stan's going to pull out some big tools to make this thing fit. Start out with this. for a moment. Let's see where this is going to lead us. So now th keep in mind that bronze is 95% copper, so it's very malleable. As you can see, just twisted that entire piece to line up a lot better. Now he gets the pneumatic. What is this thing, Eric? This is an impact. Impact. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and then we need the hammer. All right. Now that, that looks easy, but that's 20 years of experience. Exactly. 20 years and 50 seconds of experience yeah. right there. Yep. That's amazing. So now you're going to weld that up. Yep. So we're going to leave Stan for a second. Eric, you're going to take us to one that's already started to, or is there something Should else we, you want to show? Let's us? just show how. Okay. Let's look at, so you can see how these pieces, to start with, we've grinded down the edges so that they all fit together. So you see that? Yes. But you saw when we get the panels, there's parts sticking the out. Sprues. That, yeah, the sprues from the casting process that don't allow us to put them together. So actually the first step is to grind those down. This is where Jeremiah comes in, Yeah, right? let's get Jeremiah in okay, here. Okay, Jeremiah. And we actually, in addition to that, we do some forming on these, like some pre fitting because sometimes these panels are way off okay and we'll actually bend them and hammer them before you even try to put them on exactly yeah but we'll wow. just show you a little of the grinding here okay that's where you take a bigger hey guys real quick yeah um, might be having some tech difficulties I'm not getting comments coming in so so if the folks know sure. viewers know that for some reason I think like we'd have a good morning by somebody by now and i'm oh, getting good. nothing so we might be having some difficulty okay, with that gotcha just so the viewers know could too, be the is it the connection not coming we through have? on my screen so sure. just thought i'd give everybody a heads up sure, so no i'm not problem. sure why that is but. okay okay that's good to know okay jeremiah So you Good can see job. how much it took just to get one of those yeah. down. Yeah, and he's got, uh, just on this little piece itself, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of those, would you call those sprues? Or gates. Gates yep. that you've got to grind down before you even start assembling like Stan is going to. Yeah, and normally if we had this all set up right, he would have a bench and clamp these down. Yeah, yeah. You know, have a real, maybe even have a bigger um, grinder grinder on okay. there okay. and make quick work of it. Yeah. Quicker work, but it is very time yeah. consuming, even that part. So Stan, while we're standing here, why don't you throw some welds on that? Just show how, everybody how you weld that. Sure. A longer section. I guess up by the neck. Is that where you go? Yeah. Okay. Now this, what kind of welder is this? This is a TIG. A TIG. A TIG welder. All right. So he's got silicon bronze rod. 
Okay. So he's literally welding bronze right into the bronze of the casting. So the tool he's holding on the right pulls mm -hmm. up the metal, melts it, and he dips that rod into it to, yep. to fill. Yep. Dips the rod right in and it melts yeah. the bronze and closes that gap and, and seals them together. That's, that's amazing. So you've got yeah. these huge gaps you've got to fill. Yep. Well, so here he's going to tighten that. I only that. went down to here, I do have to bring that up. So you're going to... That, of course, is where this is going to come in. <laughs> okay. I should have known, right? You know. So you just hold that like that. With two hands. And you just keep working your way down. Yeah. And so next step is I'd put another clamp on it, bring this together, yeah. and it would just... Yeah. Now the amazing thing, Ken, is during the process, these wax panels get all distorted because yeah. the wax is flexible. It's twisted, and turns. Yeah, and it's almost impossible to keep them from distorting. Yeah. yeah. But the funny thing is, is if you can find a point where the bronze, the two pieces meet, yeah. weld those together Start and keep there. pushing them together like that, the bronze all reforms back to its original form Just like you sculpted. Just from those small contact points. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, the br and because the bronze itself is so flexible. Yeah. We yeah. don't think of it as being flexible, but it, you see it's, it's yeah. very flexible. It's quite flexible. That is great. So we're going to go from this stand, and we're going to go right over to this one that's in the process. And Eric, you're going to show us what happens next. So now, you can imagine as an artist, I put all this time and work into this piece, only to watch it be cut up into sections. And then you work really hard with the textures, only to see a great big weld going through my texture. Now, is it called chasing? Yep. So you'll chase, which is grinding the welds to match my texture, which I can't think of anything harder to do than with these tools. Yeah. So the, you show us. The, the reason I imagine it being called chasing is, is that here you have a problem where the weld has been yeah. made, and you're kind of chasing that the problem, problem away. Gotcha. And you want to do it in, this, in the nearest possible way. Yeah. So we want to keep our, our texturing you know, within a half inch or so of what you've done. Yes. And we have to make it look like this was never done. Okay. So you'll start with, you've got the weld kind of sticking up a little bit. Yeah. So you start with a bigger tool like this and kind of start grinding that. So right here I can see that your, your texture goes down and there's kind of an edge to it. Yes, where see this right one there? line connects. Yeah. yeah, so the two connect, but I can see an edge, so I'm going to take this and, and make that edge. Okay. So you can see right yeah. there. And so you're kind of mapping your way through this as you're grinding. Yeah, based on the texture. People think, oh, how do you how do you match what the artist did? But really, the answer is right here in front of you. You've yeah, got, we can see what you did here. See what you did here. Yeah, we have to just bring them together. And it's actually Stan that would be doing this. So, so then I'm going to bring him in on the next step. Okay, Stan, here you go. Okay. Well, let's get a good plane here, and I'm all about safety first. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Ready? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go well, ahead. I gotta get a good plane here. Okay. Once you establish a good plane, you're not worried about the grinder marks, but then he's got a bunch of these rake marks in here where I would just take one of these. We one hand these. make these tools to match the texture yes. of your sculpting tool. So if you look closely at that, you'll see those, these cuts in the continuous blade here, right? And those cuts make that texture? Yes. Yeah. So this is a pre-bought carbide tool, and then you cut these ah, marks in there, and now when he uses it, it'll match Ken's text sculpting texture. Yeah. Wow, that's can you tell, amazing. That's all it is. Can you tell Stan handles the tools a little bit? So he says that's all it is, but here I am. I'm the lucky one that works and with then, the clay that's so easy to move, and you've got to yeah. grind this metal. Yep. Oh, he's got a bigger... you just got to do the finishing. All right. Look at that. 
that's a perfect match right okay there. guys we got sylvia herbert coming in just hey, good morning sylvia. to everybody looking good she says hey sis we know sylvia well good thank you sis so that's amazing what you just did and you're going to even do more yes refinements on that and you're going to work your way down to smaller tools that's, I will. that's kind of a quick example but yeah, yeah. we'll have to really refine making yeah because we so, have to make it where it matches so, perfect so a big area i would definitely be using a bigger tool yeah uh, for the smaller areas you always want to use a so here's where a, a seam line was and yes. where we've completely wiped it out so look at yeah. all that texture that was done right here and we, i guarantee you you cannot see that i can't even see it now and when it's in patina, no. there's no way. If it wasn't a little shinier, you wouldn't know yeah. that it was there. And let's get, we'll want to give a little credit. We have yeah. another guy that works here, Jefferson, who's not yeah, here right that's now. that's right. But he did all this, uh, this chasing here. Yeah. So from here, what do you do? Once to say all the chasing is done, all the grinding and everything else, you sandblast it? The next step is sandblasting. Okay, and yeah. the sandblast is what's given this kind of a matte finish here, correct? Yeah, so when we get the, when we get the pieces, the foundry has sandblasted them. Okay. And so basically this whole thing <laughs> will look like that, that mm -hmm. flat color. And yeah. that will get rid of all the, the blue from the welding and the shininess yeah. and make everything match. So then, and that preps us for the patina. So now here's something to keep in mind. As you know, we've been tracking this process all the way. So today, of course, we're going to be doing the assembly as you saw on the chasing. But on the 2nd of, of October, here, two weeks from today, Eric is going to be doing the patina for the client with the clients here on this specific piece, right? Yeah. On well, this actually, one. our goal, we have a goal to have both of these pieces done. Ah. And then... Oh, you can show the prep and then the finish. Yeah, we're going to show a little bit of the start and a little more ah, of the finish. Perfect. That's yeah. perfect. Hey, guys, we have so. Olga coming in, just saying, looking phenomenal, oh, guys. Olga, thank you for chiming in. We miss you. I want to show, I'm going to show some more of the tools that go into the final sure, details. Sure, sure. Let me go over here. I'll be so, right back. So after we do this, we're going to go to Kristen, and she's going to show us a little example of how she would do a patina on the very small version of this, which is how it started, gosh, 10 years ago. It started off with this little 8-inch version, and now it's grown to this size. Okay, so now you have a little tiny pneumatic. Yeah, so this, this is um, when, you, when you work on a piece. This, this one's awfully big, but even here, you can see these, the cracks and the eyes and everything yeah. when the pieces are cast there's little there's little um little pieces like that little get, burrs little burrs and 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 flaws that get stuck in the cracks yeah. and we have to take little tools like this this is a dental burr like the dentist would use on your teeth ah. ouch and you can you can get in there and clean out all those little out imperfections all the little flaws so wow. i can see there's a little something here so how many RPM is that little pneumatic tool turning right now? Well, if you want to know that, we better ask Stan, because... Oh, around 60 to 80. 60 to 80,000 yeah. yeah. RPMs a minute. Yeah. yeah. Wow. A little slower than the 100,000. We have a 100,000 RPM tool. You do? Yeah. And that's what would be used... See these little tiny lines that have been put yeah. in? Yeah. Yeah. Right here? Yeah. That's what we, we would use 100,000 to go over and, yeah. and put those real fine lines in. Yeah. But um, obviously, the smaller the piece, the more you'll use these yeah. little tools. Yeah. And we try to use as big a tools as possible, but by the end of it, you got to get down to the nitty gritty. To the nitty gritty, yeah. So hours and hours and hours of work just to get ready for the patina, which is what Kristen's going to show us now, right? A little sampling of yeah, what we've sure. got to come. So okay, so here's how the big cat will look, just to pretend. <laughs> this looks an awful lot like it, and when it's all sandblasted, it'll look like that without the base. And so the first step is, is, to, is we'll wheel it with these Scotch-Brite pads. So let's have Kristen show you that. And this, this will shine the metal up and get it ready for the patina. So what this creates 
See, Ken, all the work that we did in the cracks, it, like taking the little dental burr in there and everything, mm -hmm. it's all been sandblasted and blended out, but now we can shine just the tops. And that's what allows that metal to show through and give the patina that beautiful glow. So you get that reflective quality from that shiny metal that's underneath the chemicals you're going to apply. Exactly. That makes perfect sense. Guys, yeah. we got Joel Peterson hey, Joel. coming in, just saying awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you. He, there's, we, there's, there's no nepotism that, no, in there. Then he's kind of partial, I guess. No, but you know, <laughs> we, have, we have to say Eric is because, Eric, I have to show you this text I just got in. Read, so this guy, this gentleman of mine, has been around for a number of years, collected money in my pieces, and has watched every show. He's hooked. Okay. His last sentence to me, I'll let you read. Let's read it out loud. Hope to see you soon. Eric is a cool dude. See? Oh. There you go. <laughs> so now you know. We agree with you, Joel. <laughs> nice. Yes. Okay, so one of the first steps for doing patina is to take liver of sulfur and darken areas with it that you want to be darker. So it kind of gives you an antiquing, like, yep, a, like a ring, you would show the texture by antiquing yeah, it. Yeah, if the you recesses. have silver jewelry and yes. look at it and you see the dark in the cracks, that's done yes. with liver of sulfur. Yes. So Kristen's gonna take some of that. And this doesn't even require heat to change the bronze. So watch how this changes it. Well, it turns it dark instantly. Yeah, just like that. And the stronger the mix, the darker now, it'll what go. Now, what is liver of sulfur? Is it like a Sulfur that from the potassium ground? Potassium sulfate, yeah. Just ah. like when you go to Yellowstone. Yes. And you smell that. In the that. geysers, yeah. In the geysers, yeah. Yeah. I actually remember one time I was at Yellowstone with you and yes. I took home a piece from one of the geysers and tried it on a patina. Did it work? It didn't work that good. Oh, shoot. It, oh, well. It, it kind of, it was like a very weak. Okay. You know, I guess the stuff we buy online is. It's uh, concentrated. It's con super powered, yeah. So with that, yeah. now you're, you're, darkening the entire piece, but you're going to burnish that, which will really influence the texture of the piece. Yeah, right? so when you, I'll show you real quick, when you have the liver on there, you could take a, a scotch okay, so pad. Okay, so let's show how little texture you see right now, and now watch what yeah. happens. You can All those highlight. highlights yeah. come up. And see, on this piece, we're just doing the base with the liver, yes. and we leave the cat lighter so it stands out against it. Yeah. And the cats have that light tan color, so we don't put a bunch of liver on the cat on. itself. Maybe yeah. just the tip of the the tips of their tails are darker. Yeah, and a little bit around like the top of their head. Yeah, so Kristen might might add a little there for that. Yeah, but that would be it. Why so not? she would continue to work that all the way around. But I guess now we could just show a little bit of the how yeah. she heats it yeah, up. Yeah, sure, the, sure. Hey guys, we have Kim Corey, our good friend Kim Corey, hey, Kim. coming in, saying hi to everyone at the Bronze Age. Thanks for being amazing. Well, Kim, thank you. It's, Hello it's, to you too, Kim. If you, if you panned around us right now, you'd see a lot of Kim's lot work of Kim's here, too. Yeah. Here as well, so. yes. well, no, actually, you won't see that much because she always makes us get it done right away. <laughs> so it's, it's out the door. Right, Kim? We don't mess around when it comes to Kim Corey. That's we right. get her work done. Priority yes, that's number right. one. Uh, you can see normally, too, we would turn the... Um, Exhaust fan? The exhaust fan on. Yeah. And it's really loud, so. Sure. Just for this little bit. So she's gonna bring this up to about 300 or 400 degrees, you think? About between three and five, yep. Yep, okay. And this is cupric. Yeah, Liqui so liquefied copper. Cupric nitrate. A different brush. There's a good brush. Yeah, so cupric nitrate, put a little of that on there and that'll give us some green color in the Look how that just comes up instantly as soon as she waves a torch over it. Now show, maybe you could even, she could even take the wheel back over that and bring out some highlight. Okay. So see, that brings some brighter highlights yeah. back. And then she's gonna go over the top of that with now is ferric, ferric nitrate. nitrate, which is liquefied iron. This yeah. is the red. So the ferric nitrate, that's what we take the uh, nails in a jar yes. and we pour nitric right. acid in. But we'll get more into that next, next week. Yeah. Hey Ken, we got a question coming in from Debbie Himsel. Yeah, Debbie. She's asking how much direction would you give on the patina? Well, when you have somebody like Eric that has done my patinas for 15 years, it's not much. 
He has done so many of my lions and wolves and everything else. I don't even have to be here, basically. I can just say it's like this piece. And so, oh yeah, right. So when I come here to pick up the pieces, especially if it's the first one, I will then inspect it. And Eric and I will kind of put our heads together and see what looks best. But it's pretty seamless. Another well, really good question, excuse me, gentlemen, uh, from uh, Carl uh, Morris, if I'm saying that right. Yeah. Uh, Carl's asking, was the small version of the cat cast as one piece? or the result of welded components? Probably the question. tail was casted separately. So it's just in two pieces, I would assume, right, Eric? It was two pieces with a little hole cut in it that okay. we had to fill in. Okay. So yeah, this is one of the simplest castings. And I'll show you why, too. <coughs> because it's totally, it's a little hot now, but you see it's totally hollow underneath. And that means that they can put all the sprues to it underneath, underneath. it which allows the bronze to flow into here. Yeah, and also there's no nowhere for the um, shell to get caught and everything. So this is a very simple casting yeah. comparatively. Yeah. Where just the size of the big one yeah. means you have to cut it into all those so, panels. So many pieces. Yeah. That is amazing. So we got another question, you guys, from Aaron. Aaron Horton. Uh, yeah. is, is that a Jackson Pollock hanging in the background or just chemical <laughs> splatter on the walls? That's hey, awesome. It could be. Well, that and Eric's Levi's are for sale. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> see this? Levi's this is sale. in vogue right now. Yeah. And, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> and Robert Albrecht, hello from Sedona. Oh, Robert, yes. <laughs> let, listen, let me tell Erin, Kristen, back in, she has her, her regular patina booth is in another room that we mm -hmm. couldn't go back to. Um, she hangs canvases up back there to catch all this and, and create Oh, painting. you do? I yeah. didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Do, you, do you frame them? Um, I'm trying to find a good way to, like, mount to them. seal them and mount them. Yeah. Because it's it's ah. harder than it seems to get that to work out. Mm -hmm. It seems like it looks great on the wall, but you set something back there and all of a sudden things are complicated. That but. might lead to a live stream. <laughs> yes, we'll have to check on that one for yeah. sure. Yeah. So well, next week we'll be back there. So we'll be skipping next Friday. Yeah, or, so oh, next Friday. But next Friday is Jen Farnsworth. Yeah, Jen Farnsworth is next weekend, the, our painter. We're going to do it live from the gallery. She's going to paint a painting just like she did like in, what was that, March or April? Okay. So please stay tuned for that. And then we're back here two weeks from today with the big Simba. The clients are going to be here in person, and we're going to watch it be patinaed just like this. Oh, yeah. Actually, we won't be back there. We'll be right here. Right here? Okay, yep. good. So is there anything else we can think of? Uh, I think. Well, we I want to thank everybody for making this live stream such a popular thing. And I can't thank the artists that you met. And, and you'll still continue to meet as we go through this process because I surely will tell you that when people ask me how pieces are casted, the first thing I say is it's a collaboration with many artists. And I'm so glad that you get to meet them now because without them, I couldn't do this for a living. So thank you so much. We'll see you next Friday, 9 o'clock, no, 8 o'clock, I'm sorry, at our gallery with Jen Farnsworth. And then we're back here on the 2nd of October. Thank you. Thanks.